Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another DirectX video. Last video we discussed keyboard input and we used a message in the window proc and we created a case WM input. You can use WM key up and WM key down or WM underscore input if you want or this tutorial will discuss a different approach. And this approach will tie into your update algorithm. And in case you put your update and your draw in different threads, this will tie in nicely with the update thread. So this is the two tutorials ago, which was updating sprites with a timer. Just like what we did last video, I just changed the name of the title here, and that way it's nice uh, baseline for our keyboard input. So we basically undid everything we did last tutorial. There's no case WM underscore input here. So we just have a nice blank slate for what we're going to do this video. All right, in this video, we can open up game.cpp and we have the update here. And here, we're just going to do our logic for detecting keyboard input. For this way we're going to approach it, we are going to use a function called get async key state. And that just detects if the key you pass in, we're, go we're gonna have to use a virtual key value here. It's just gonna detect if that key, what the result is at this specific time that we call it. So for example, since we don't have a menu system up, let's configure this to end the game if we press the escape key. You do not want to do this in a final game product uh, there's a few games out there that have this where you press escape and the game will close out uh, so just be aware of that this is just because we do not have a menu system in place yet so if get async key state again we're going to have to provide the v key value here and a lot of those are already provided for you like vk underscore escape but the letters you're going to have to provide yourself by using the previous tutorial uh, where it outputted what the number was what the key value code was you can just write down or in the next few videos i will have an input system available for you that has the rest of the v keys available all right, so if we press the escape key, we want to post the quit message. So post quit message, and we're just going to pass it zero there. So now if we run our game, and if we press escape, it'll quit the game. That's good. Okay, so now let's talk about the letter keys. Uh, the letter keys aren't provided by the usual V key de definitions that are provided to you. So we're going to have to come up with a system. But right now, let's test for the C character, the C key on the keyboard. And that's a 67, a code of 67. So if get async key state 67, that's for the C key on the keyboard so that's if the C key was pressed and we're gonna make a string message C uh, let's just do C key is pressed all right now we're gonna do a message box here null message dot c underscore message dot c underscore str open closing parentheses null null and that should be it if we press f5 and run this we press the c key now you notice i paused the game 
uh, because we're doing a message box here. But if we click OK, the game is going, it's just not updating the user interface. So if I leave that around for a while, it will not, the, the sprites are still moving, it's just not drawing it. And then we press OK, and then it's drawing it again. So it's still processing the code, it's still updating the sprites, it's updating their positions, just not drawing it on the window. So that's another way to do keyboard input, and that ties in nicely with your update logic. If you have a game that only has a few characters, you'll want to use the get async state. Like if you only have the up, down, left, and right arrows for like a space shooter game and then the space key, you probably would just want to use the get async key state. However, if you have a lot of button and key presses to test, there is a function that I will go into in the tutorial where we will discuss an input system class. This one will be get keyboard state. So this will get the entire state of the keyboard. It puts it in a p byte value, which is a uh, pointer to a byte array and it'll just get the entire state of the keyboard using the virtual keys as the array. So that's what we'll be using in the input system. But if you are, like if you have a pawn clone where you only move up and down and that's all you do, you probably just want to use uh, vkey up underscore up and V key underscore down. Up key pre is pressed and down key is pressed. So we run that, up key is pressed, click OK, down key is pressed. So if you're building a pawn clone, this is pretty much all you'll need. You don't need to test for all the letters the shift, control, alt, the numbers, you don't need to test for any more than just up and down. If that's the case, you want to use the get async key state. Tie that into your update logic. Do that before you update your sprites. And then in the next tutorial, we will go into an input system where we can tie it, we can map it to a name, so where instead of detecting a key press, that will happen in the background, but in our code, we will say, did we move forward? Moving forward will be the command, but, you know, in the future game, in a good game, you'll want to have the player, you want to give the player the ability to remap what key moves them forward. So the input system will map our key presses to a command where we can press W to move forward, or the up arrow to move forward, or if somebody wants, um, you know, use L to move forward, for example. So that's it for this video. Uh, just using this ties in nicely with our update logic. We can add it to the game level, and get everything all going nice, and then update our sprites after the fact and then escape we'll quit the game for now otherwise in the future we will display a menu um, a pause menu when we press the escape all right uh, next video we will discuss a input system it will be a pretty lengthy video i'll probably make it two parts uh, this week is thanksgiving week i hope to have at least part of it out by the weekend. Uh, if not, it'll be coming up shortly. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you found a good method, depending on your needs. You might want to use the WM underscore input in main here. 
Uh, you might want to use that, what I discussed last tutorial, or you might find the Git Async Key State, or you might want to go ahead and start learning on the Git Keyboard State. function here. You might want to just look up on that or you can just wait for my video on that which will discuss the input system. Alright, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.